friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I want to do basically an update or revisit the how to make a fermentation starter and show you some starters at various stages. So let's get to it. All right, so what I have here are a couple of fermentation starters I already got going a couple days ago. I just fed this one. You can see the sugar in the bottom. And I also just fed this one. Now this is raisin in case you can't tell and then this one is blueberry now one thing i'm going to do with the blueberry is i'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more fruit to this so and i'll get to that in a minute and i want to shake that up because i've got that sugar in there still dissolving and this one has started getting a little bit bubbly this one hasn't yet surprisingly enough because the raisin the raisin usually ferments up real quick. So I'm going to show you a picture right here. That is uh, a few years ago. I did a peach, a strawberry, and a raisin. I started them all at the same time. And the one that got bubbly the quickest was the raisin. But all three of them did quite well. So you can use any fruit, really. Now today, I'm going to use some fresh-picked raspberries. Now since I'm just doing this in a pint-sized jar, you can see how many raspberries I have in there. It's just a little bit, maybe a quarter cup. And what you want to do, what you're going to need is some organic cane sugar. You could try this with honey. I never have. It might work. But when it comes to making a fermentation starter, I find I prefer to use a good organic cane sugar for this process. To your fruit, you're going to add about one tablespoon of the sugar. Now, if you're using raisins, you may not need to add sugar at all. And this could be why this one's taking longer because the raisins already have a lot of sugar in them. Unlike your other berries, especially raspberries, they, they're not, they don't have as much of a sugar content as raisins do. So I could have left the sugar out of this like I do with my vin when I'm making raisin vinegar. And so that could be why it's taking longer. I don't know. Um, but anyway, when you add water, you want to make sure you use a good filtered water. You can use distilled water if you want. You do not want to use city tap water because it has so many chemicals added to it that it could really interfere with your fermentation starter um, and with the process. And besides, you really want to stay away from all that garbage anyway. The fluoride and the chlorine, it's really not good for you to be ingesting. Okay, so what I have here is um, my own filtered rainwater. We use a Berkey filter, and I will link to the Berkey filters and to the jugs that I use and the little rubber stoppers down below. So this is what I, I keep several of these jugs and I store the water in. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water. I'm not going to put too much, just enough to cover the fruit real good. So you notice that how much lower this one is. I'll get to that in a minute. So now I'm going to put my lid on the raspberry fermentation starter. And I'm going to swish that sugar and fruit around in there so the sugar can start dissolving. And you can just come back and do this every you know, every so often during the day. Now what I recommend is first day, um, about a few hours later, uh, let's say you start this in the morning, then maybe right at noon, add a little bit more sugar and a little bit more water, only a little bit to about maybe right there. And then in the evening, do it again. Now today I'm only going to do this a second time. And this is only on the first day that you need to do this. So Tonight, I'm going to fill it up to here. So you can, do, uh, you can do this process one or two more times during the day, not more than that. And that's only on the first day. Now tomorrow, I'm only going to do that once. And then on the third day, I'm going to do it once again. I'll probably add a little bit more fruit on the second or third day. And by somewhere between day three and day four, Five is usually when you're going to find it's going to be good and bubbly. So it's going to depend on the fruit you use and how cold your environment is, where you store this. I've been keeping it on the counter and today is actually a real chilly day. So I may need to move it on top of the refrigerator if I want to speed up the process. But I'm really not in a hurry because I got my good, a good fermentation started right here. And I'll get to that in a minute. So anyway, again, first day, 
add to it once or twice, not more than that, throughout the day and make sure you swish it up. Um, I would say just a teaspoon of sugar, not a tablespoon the next time, just, just a tablespoon the first time. Next time, a teaspoon if you're doing this, you know, on the first day. Now, second day, do a tablespoon of sugar and a little bit more water and just keep doing that until your jar is full, even if it's not bubbly yet. Now, if by the day three or four or five and your jar is full and it's still not bubbly, then just keep coming back to it. Obviously, you can't add more fruit and water to it, but you should still be able to add a little more sugar to it and swish it around and keep doing that until it's very, very fizzy. Once you have your fermentation starter good and bubbly, then up from that point on, it's just a matter of maintaining it and keeping it alive. Now, you can store it in your refrigerator, which is going to be the best if you don't think you're gonna use it daily, which most people I don't think would need to. However, if you're not gonna use it daily, you know, you may like to start some, a new ferment every single day, whatever, it's totally up to you. If you're gonna use it daily, keep it on top of your refrigerator in a warm place, and then what you do is every time you use it, you're gonna need to top it off with liquid and you're gonna need to add a little bit more sugar. It needs to be fed daily if it's kept out in a warm area. Now, if you keep it in your refrigerator, you can pretty much forget about it for up to a month and then pull it out and feed it. Um, for me, I just, I keep it in the refrigerator. I feed it every time I need to use it. And so what I'll do is, if I'm making a, a jar of kimchi or other kind of fermented vegetables or fruits, then I'll take out a quarter cup of the liquid to one quart jar of whatever it is I'm fermenting, um, making sure I strain out the fruit, then I top it back off with water and add a little bit of sugar, um, maybe a, about a tablespoon of sugar to a jar this size. Um, I let it sit and make sure that sugar gets dissolved kind of warm up a little bit, then I'll stick it back in the refrigerator until I need it again. So whenever I need it, like today I want to get another, I'm going to start fermenting something that that's going to be a little different that I'll be doing a video of. Then I like to pull it out and let it get warmed up and start to get fizzy before I use it. Um, it can be used straight out of the refrigerator. I've done that before and it works just fine. I just I just prefer to let it kind of get up to room temperature and get good and fizzy. So um, let me shake this a bit so you can see. This isn't a real tight fitting lid, but you can see the bubbles. And you can hear the fizziness. That is how your fermentation should sound once it's ready now, to go. Now, what I use this for is I use it for making the homemade natural soda. I use it, as I said, for fermenting kimchi and other vegetables. I fermented fruit. I don't do the fruit thing that often, but I keep meaning to. Like I wanna ferment some blueberries with it this year just for the heck of it to give it a try. Um, and then the most recent thing I've been getting into is making bread with this as my yeast. Not using a store-bought yeast, not using a sourdough starter. <clears throat> which I've done sourdough bread. I know all about that. I've made my own sourdough starter and made sourdough bread. I did that for a while. However, I really want to experiment with this to see if I could get a different flavor um, and maybe something a little more sweet, less sour. Not that I don't like, like sour, sour bread, because I do. I was looking for a sweeter bread, but also for the ease of not having to have so many different things culturing away in my free refrigerator. So if I have this, this is all I need. And I have had a couple of successes with the bread so far. And I showed you in another video, but I'll show you again here is a picture of one of the loaves of bread I've made so far using my fermentation starter. Now that one was made with organic white flour. I have since made a couple with solely 100% home ground, hand milled, organic white wheat flour and it was so good um, one loaf turned out really good and fl pretty fluffy even though it was whole wheat the other one not so much so i would like to work with a little bit more before i do a video on it and share that with you but it is coming along and i'm very excited because i know i'm getting a good healthy bread 
um, that's from soaked grains and all that kind of stuff with my own homemade fermentation starter. I do not need to go to the store and buy yeast to do that. All right, before I close this video, I just wanna say, make sure that you experiment with a few different fruits at a time like I have going on here so that you can find out what works best for you. Hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless. Thank you.